Russian forces on the move again into eastern Ukraine. Preparations, Ukrainian officials tell CNN, for a new offensive by pro-Russian separatists. We have seen columns of Russian equipment, uh, primarily Russian tanks, Russian artillery, uh, Russian air defense systems, and Russian combat troops uh, entering into Ukraine. And NATO says they've observed something even more alarming. Russian warplanes capable of carrying nuclear weapons deployed to Crimea. <laughs> Annexed by Russia illegally earlier this year, if confirmed, the step could violate multiple international treaties. We see uh, forces that are capable of being nuclear that are being moved to Crimea. Whether they are or not, we do not know, but they do have the kind of equipment there that could support that mission. Russia's foreign ministry immediately denied the claims, calling them, quote, unfounded. The new weapons, accompanied by renewed fierce fighting between Ukrainian forces and separatists, has all but ended a brief, shaky ceasefire. Expressing alarm in both public and private, Ukrainian officials say they are now preparing to fight. We expect unexpected actions from them. I see it as our main task to prepare for military action. Today at a UN Security Council session on the situation in Ukraine, Ambassador Samantha Power condemned Russia's actions. Russia has negotiated a peace plan and then systematically undermined it at every step. It talks of peace, but it keeps fueling war. As the situation on the ground in Ukraine has escalated, so have provocations in the air, close encounters between Russian forces and American and NATO forces. We've already seen that up along the Atlantic coast numerous times, down just 50 miles off the, the California coast. We've seen them in the Atlantic Ocean multiple times, both in the air and under the water, even in Europe. But just today, the Russian Defense Ministry expanded their areas of operation, say that now they're going to carry uh, those flights as close to the U.S. as here, the Gulf of Mexico, in the Caribbean as well. And, and I can tell you, Wolf, that the Defense Department treats these provocations very seriously. And if they expand that close to U.S. territory, this is going to be uh, a very alarming situation. And what, do you, what does it say to you, Jim, that the uh, NATO Supreme Allied Commander, General Philip Breedlove, we just saw him in your report, he raises this really ominous specter that some of the military equipment being brought into Crimea could have nuclear capability. You know, it's interesting. It's an alarming thought just to talk about it. You know, the best assessment, I've spoken to intelligence officials, defense officials about this today, is that, yes, they brought in aircraft that are capable of carrying nuclear missiles. That said, a lot of things can carry nuclear missiles, and there's no intelligence to say that those particular planes they now have on the ground in Crimea are carrying them. But to say that so publicly uh, shows the concern that NATO has about this. And I think it's something they're watching very closely. And remember, it's the same on the ground in Ukraine, because even without nuclear weapons, remember, you have very he heavy weapons already on the ground in Ukrainian territory, more of them today, missile launchers, tanks, etc. Uh, Ukrainian officials preparing for an escalation.